Hi, what's the squad news? Is uh, Roman Fab fit again? Uh, yeah, Roman is, is is ready. He had a couple of days. He was ill for the for the game against Newcastle, but he has been training normal this week, and, and he's ready for tomorrow. And the rest are, are the same that uh, we had uh, past past week here. No new knocks. No, nothing new, nothing. Do you envisage making many changes, or is consistency key now? Uh, I cannot tell you the starting eleven. I will no. tell you tomorrow. I will tell the opposition <laughs> tomorrow the the eleven that uh, that start. And uh, I think from game to game you have to analyze what you will have in front. I think it's going to be a different game from the one we had uh, against Newcastle, and we have to be ready for for different challenges. Uh, We'll see what uh, what's uh, the starting lineup. It's six Premier League games now without a win. At, at what point does that start to weigh on the shoulders of the players? Uh, I think we are in a good moment. I think uh, the Newcastle game it was one of the best we've played this season. Not even in the last month. This season, I think I finished really happy with the game. After after even after reviewing it, we we were very good against a very good team, and uh, it's it's true that probably we are not as good in the boxes that we've been in the previous run. But I think overall the team is doing good things and I I, I, I think uh, we, we can be good also tomorrow and knowing that it's going to be difficult also. You still rue that VAR decision or do you, have you change your mind now? If, if we start discussing, it's going to be a long one. <laughs> um, now I understand the process they, they took to take that decision. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with the decision because at the end it's something about interpretation. If you go to the literality, I think the common sense, everyone in the room says is offside. But even now understanding better the process, I think uh, is the interpretations of w what we understand is challenging an opponent for the ball. This is the key, no? And I think the, the lineman considered offside, the referee considered offside. Even the VAR, after hearing uh, what they were talking about, considered offside. This true, the assistant of the VAR gives his argument and is uh, according to the rule. Another argument he doesn't consider. And I understand the process. I don't. I, I don't agree with the interpretation. I, I consider that uh, he's challenging an opponent for the ball. But my complaint would be that the referee, the actual referee, doesn't have a chance to take the decision. They only show him the grab. They never show him the wide angle where the ball is when they are inside the box. It's already going to, 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 through them. And the controversial decision is not taken by the... I, w I would say it's taken by the fourth in the line. And the actual referee doesn't give the opinion that, OK, in my interpretation, is not challenging an opponent for the ball. They don't give him the chance. I think the assistant VAR takes a decision. They give him the images to reinforce this decision. And uh, but now I understand the the process, and I can uh, understand their, their argument. You mentioned the performance. You're happy with the performance against Newcastle. How do you then turn these draws into wins? VAR aside. Yeah, we have to. Uh, we have to to win this kind of games, even we've won games, we've played much worse than the other day against Newcastle. At the end, you have to be more clinical in the finishing. We missed, especially first half, two very, very clear chances. Also with the 2-1, uh, we had chances to, to finish the game. We didn't, and especially tomorrow against City, you are not going to have the chances we had the other day. Uh, maybe the first one you have, you have to do, you have to score, you have to be very good defensive, you have to give you the the, the chance no uh, to to increase the percentages that you have that probably are low and we will try to do it tomorrow yeah what do you say to your players ahead of a game like Manchester City such a dominant team particularly your, against you guys as well historically is it a free shot no I think it's obviously uh, is one of the most difficult games you can play uh, they are a team with more possession you have to be ready especially mentally, to to be a lot of time without the ball, to be defending lower than we are used to defend, 
to go to the press and get beaten and go the next one again and then get beaten and go the next one with the same intensity and mentally be 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 ready to wait for your moment, wait for your chance, wait for your because also I think we can we can damage them, but it's obviously uh, a very difficult game in in a lot of five years. Do you think they're going to win the title? Are they your favourites? I think they are the favourites. Probably they are the main favourites, but it's true that I think it's going to be a race of three teams until the very end because they are very, very good teams. And I think it's going to go to the to the very end. Can you see any weaknesses? It's difficult to see weaknesses. It's difficult. Uh, I think uh, they control a lot the games. They, they, they don't want the games to be very open. They want to make the games just one direction, you know, when they they take the ball, they dictate the game, they don't leave you brave, and we have to try to make it both directions. Even if we are going to concede chances, uh, uh, probably they can score uh, a goal, but we have to make it also to a game of two directions, so they are also uh, concerned about our forwards, and uh, I, I trust also our forwards. I think they can make a difference, yeah. How do you stop Erling Haaland then? It, it looks that it's not easy, no? According to the, to the, to the stats, he scores a uh, goal a game. It's like this, a goal a game. Uh, but it's not just Erling Haaland. Uh, he's is the, the one who finishes a lot of things, but they have a lot of different threats. Because you have to stop Rodri, stop Kevin De Bruyne, stop Foden, stop. You have a lot of players to stop. And um, just in terms of, uh, I suppose the one positive is this game is at home. It's under the lights. Late kick on off on Saturday. How big a role could the fans play in helping you guys? Yeah, I think it's gonna be a good, good atmosphere. I love to play a night game. I think uh, at home, I think we need to improve because I think we've been. Uh, better in our away games and I think we need to improve our our form at home especially and uh, I, I, I'm sure we're gonna have a good atmosphere and now it's our our turn no? to give a, a good start of the game and, and keep everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Andoni, you said about being prepared to defend low after the away game you said that was part of the problem you defended too though. Where, where's the balance? How do you get that message across? No, it's not our intention. We are going to try to play as high as we can. But we know that sometimes, because it happens to every team that uh, they face uh, Manchester City, so sometimes you will have to defend low. Sometimes you just consider one corner, and from the corner they spend three, four minutes on the ball, and you are, you know, like handball, you know, there in your box, just trying to cover everything, blocking everything. And it's difficult to win the space, to to play higher against them. But we have to try. We have to try and be really aggressive and win duels in the middle and make them run backwards. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's very difficult because you can survive for some minutes, for half an hour, for but 100 minutes defending low is not going to work for sure. When they can do that so very, very well, how do you replicate that in training to get your players ready for the handball defence? We try to replicate. Uh, it's very difficult because uh, they are different players. They have their system also very well worked. They know each other very well. They have different structures. Even if it looks uh, every time the same, it's not the same. They change small things to make your defence more difficult. And uh, you have to be ready for a lot of different scenarios. Probably. We think uh, probably for the first minute we have a plan, but after 10, 15 minutes, this plan doesn't work anymore and we have to change something because they fall some and they, they are very used to do these things and we have to be at their level. They have excellent players in every position. The, the, the fans here will remember Nathan Ake very, very fondly. How highly do you rate him? He's playing very well and also I think he scored against us the first game he, he, he played there in the Etihad and uh, I hope he doesn't have the best of the performances but uh, he's playing very well, he's defending very well, he's even uh, making some offensive plays and uh, he's, uh, they have top level players. And did you take anything from the way Chelsea and Brentford 
caused them problems over the last week? I think they played really well, especially I would say Chelsea gave them a lot of problems with the speed they had uh, up front with uh, Sterling, with Jackson, with uh, Palmer. I think they played really, really well, especially first half. It's true that the second half, they put so much pressure on you that they couldn't, you know, they couldn't counter-attack so much and, and Manchester City were more in control of the game. But I think the first half of of Chelsea, I think, was was really good. And I know you're asked about Dominic Solanke every week, yeah. but tomorrow, assuming he plays, it'll be his 100th Premier League game for Bournemouth. Before you arrived, he'd scored nine Premier League goals in 75 games. Now it's 14 in 24 this season. So goals per game, he's five times better. How have you and he done that? I think uh, he's a very good player and he was a very good player the first day I came here. I don't think we have improved on Solanke. Uh, he's uh, the same player. Uh, the only thing is probably he suits very well to our system. We have made him play a little bit higher and uh, he's now with the confidence and he's scoring his goals. He's in a really good form and uh, I'm happy that he's receiving this this uh, recognition because he, he deserves it. How was that confidence when you first arrived, when you first sat down with him his first, you know, he's always had the talent, but was he, you know, did he have confidence in his own abilities from the very first day you turned up? Yeah, I think uh, everyone here valued Dom a lot and uh, you can feel it as soon as you start training with the team, Normally, your teammates is a good measure to know, no? And they respect him a lot. They, uh, everyone loves him because he has the level. Also, he has the, the humility. He works hard for the team. And this is especially for a number nine that is normally uh, valued because of the goals. It, it's, it's, for me, it's very valuable. He seems quite cool and calm, even quiet, does he? You know, it's good being ice cool as a striker, but does he have a fiery side as well? I think he's, uh, he doesn't speak too much, but I would say whenever he says something, everyone listens. Everyone listens. That I think is normally a good sign. Thank you.